The next uh, C that I want to talk about, the underwriting three C's, is collateral. Okay, we saw that the issue there is can be measured as the loan to value ratio. So the higher the loan to value ratio, the riskier the loan. So it's a ratio. It's the ratio of the loan amount to the value of the property. Okay, so that's, uh, so the real, since we pretty much know what the loan amount is, the the questionable thing, the thing that might be uncertain, is what's the actual value of the property. Um, an addition, there are some additional factors that affect the value of the collateral uh, that I might mention. One is, is the purchase a speculative purchase? And it used to be the definition of speculative was non-owner occupied. That is, if you lived in your own home, then you were not a speculator. But if you bought the home and then <coughs> rented it out to somebody else, then, then it was more speculative. I think in the latest, uh, in the run-up in the aughts, uh, 2005, 2006, I think a lot of the people who even were buying their own homes were actually speculating. Uh, they were making big bets on house prices. The, the problem with the speculator is that the speculator is more willing to give up the house. They're not as committed to living in the house, and so they're a bit more likely to default. So even taking a loan to the value ratio as given, if you give me a choice between uh, two mortgage, as an investor, investing in two mortgages, one of which goes to a speculator and one of which goes to a to just a regular owner occupant I'd rather make the loan <laughs> to the owner occupant because the owner occupant is more committed to living there so there, again the, the point is that there can be other factors a, a but the uh, probably the most difficult thing to deal with could be the value how do you know that the value is what it is and with a Probably the most confidence in the value would come from a what's called I've th I've told about talked about this before a rate and term refinance where you know the worst case is that maybe the value has gone down since the uh, borrower bought the home because if the if the value has stayed the same or gone up and the borrower is not taking cash out so if the house price is at least as high as before at least as high as when they bought it then this rate and term refi the loan to value ratio must be going down so you're you're definitely getting a less risky loan than the one that you're that was ref, that the person is refinancing. So rate and term refinance, uh, you don't have to worry too much about the value, and if the <coughs> um, and if the value has fallen and the borrower still hasn't defaulted and they want to have a rate and term refi, again it just seems like a low risk uh, sort of proposition. So rate and term refi is probably the lowest risk in terms of being able to being confident that you've got the value in the loan to value ratio. Um, then we have what's known as what we call an arm's length transaction. Length probably should spell it th arm's length transaction, and that just means that it isn't that the 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 borrower tried to get the lowest price possible. You know, when you're trying to buy a home, you don't want to overpay. So the borrower tried to get the lowest price possible, and that's what we mean by an <coughs> arm's length transaction. And so presumably then we're, we have some confidence that the price is not too high. Although remember we have any case where there's like a seller buy down of the mortgage rate 
or something else like that, <coughs> or any other kind of seller contribution, that may have artificially inflated the price. So you have to be a little bit careful, but for the most part on arm's length transactions, price is not too high. Um, okay, how else when the uh, when the uh, borrower has bought a ho house. This is called a for purchase loan. Remember, there's the rate and term refi. There's the purchase. And now that's what we're talking about now. And then later we'll talk about a cash out refi. So for the purchase, the other thing you could you have is an appraisal. And I think nowadays, I'm not sure that the appraisal means so much in a purchase transaction. Uh, you have things like Zillow, um, I'll use Zillow or other comparisons. So these are property databases that you can use to get uh, some idea of comparable sales. Um, and the, another thing you can do is something called, there's something called the Case-Shiller uh, price, ind price Indices. And you, it, you you know, Case and Schiller actually publish and sell these, but but this methodology can be that they use can be applied uh, to anybody who has <coughs> data on a history of sales prices. Basically, the idea, rough idea of it is, let's say prices have been going up. If you look at properties that have sold multiple times, let's say you see that prices have been going up. 5% per year. And now you're looking at a transaction on a house that three years ago was $100,000. So at 5% a year, it should be roughly 115000 today. And if you see a sales price of 148000 you, you put a question mark behind it. Maybe that's, you know, that <coughs> maybe you're not getting the right loan to value ratio there. You know, why, why is it that this house appreciated so much faster than other houses? So the point is that there are now database tools available to check on the value of a house when you have a purchase transaction. Um, and that can, so between the database tools available and the, fa and the fact that it's not in the borrower's interest to uh, overpay for a house, you can pretty much use the sales price uh, as an indication of value. Again, if it isn't too far out of line with what you see in databases, uh, even without <coughs> a hands-on appraisal. The scariest thing from the point of view of measuring value is the cash-out refinance because the borrower is going to probably shop appraisals around. You're very dependent on the appraisal. Um, you, could, you can use the databases, but you really don't know uh, whether the borrower has maintained the house in an above average state, below average st uh, state, or what, whatever. Um, so there's really, you really do need an appraisal. Because in, instead of having the borrower's interest working with you, that is, with a purchase, the borrower is trying to get the lowest price possible. With a cash out refi, they're trying to get the highest price possible so that they can so they can take the most cash out. So now we have the borrower's interest working against you, and so it really is important to get an appraisal in the cash out refinance and even with an appraisal uh, there's going to be additional risk.